I've been making movies about the Stanek Gallery since it opened in 2015. There we are. What characterizes every artist that they have shown is a commitment to craftsmanship, an abundance of skill, and an exceptional feeling for materials. Stanek Gallery always does group shows, which are usually selected by a guest curator with a particular point of view. The current show, Passion and Desire, is curated by artist Lorraine Riesenbach, who founded Philadelphia's Artist House Gallery. I caught her talking with some devoted fans. Talking to Lynn Riesenbach, who's the, one of the best curators of art in the city of Philadelphia. She provided a conduit for us to meet the artists and become part of the art ownership relationship. Well, let, let me tell you a little bit about Artist House. Artist House was started with the idea of helping artists get started and helping collectors get started. Yeah. And so for that purpose, we would say to the artists, bring in your new work. You're just out of school. Don't price it too high. Price it low. Better to get it out there at a low price than not to get it out there. Right. And people will see it in other people's houses and they'll go looking for that artist's work. You've both succeeded in terms of helping the artists, but also in helping these collectors who have become collectors now. I feel it, really good about that. That's it the helped truth train my eye to <laughs> see what you put <laughs> together, you. you know, the Thank curation. You. It's it's here, it's reflected here too, but yes. now I understand um, what the relationship is and what I like and don't like based on, you know, those roots. Well, every gallery has its own bent. Our bent was to the realism. Mm. And so you saw very little abstraction our gallery. Right. That's not that we didn't like abstraction. We did, and occasionally we even add a piece or two, but not a lot. That wasn't what we favored. Well, you, to me, had the PAFA tradition, and you continued on with that, with the light and the way that the artists relate to the light, especially in this region. And, and that, That's that, what we that, like. That succeeds more with realism, I think, than with uh, the abstraction. Yeah. We were there for 22 years, and in the 22 years, we, we had well over 200 different artists well over 200. And a lot of them went on to bigger things. Uh, the intention is, of course, for every artist to be able to make a living out of it, and not so many can do that. But some of them were good enough. These that are in here tonight are among the best. But they were all good. There was nobody who wasn't good. But... Thank you very much. The day I went to film was a special get-together between some of the gallery artists, collectors, and also art consultants. Including Lorraine, I talked to six of the artists in the show, but the other seven could not make it. But Lorraine gave me some interesting tidbits about the absentees. Brett Eberhardt teaches in Rhode Island, a wonderful artist who did not go to Pennsylvania Academy. I think he's the only one on this entire list who did not attend Pennsylvania Academy. But he's married to Elena Pateva, and she did go to the Academy, and that's how Brett came to us. Wonderful artist. Elena, she teaches at UMass. She's from Bulgaria. Carolyn Pyfrom and Pete Van Dyke both went to the Florence Academy of Fine Arts. That's where they met. They came back here. Pete's from here, but Carolyn's from Alabama. And uh, she went over there to study and met Pete. And they came back here and married and now have a child. They have a little boy. They're both wonderful artists. They are also prominent exemplars of the so-called perceptual painting approach which means they work from direct observation and never use photographic reference. I remember talking to Pete some years ago, and he said he often works from drawings that he makes on location. I love the compositions and paint quality of their work. Frances Wolfe happens to be the wife of the governor, Tom Wolfe. She's a wonderful artist who has 
very interesting ideas and you see them in, in her work. She's quite remarkable in what she produces. Rita Klinger was one of my partners at the Artist House and uh, she was with me for about 16 years and uh, she just happens to be on a cruise now which was planned long ago so she couldn't be here. My own work, I do very little now. I'm retired and I do it when I have time but I don't have a whole lot of time. But I enjoy doing still life. David Graham Baker started showing with me when he was still a student at Pennsylvania Academy and he was winning every award and selling everything he could produce. And he's now showing in about four or five different states. He does a lot of uh, genre painting. He uses his own family as his models and he hires models too. He does remarkable work. Now won't you accompany me inside the Stanek Gallery where I'll talk with some of the artists that had the good sense of showing up when I arrived. Every movie I ever made, I always wanted Michael to be in it and sometimes he eludes me. Hi, I'm Michael Bartman. I'm excited to be in the show. It's called Desire and Passion. Uh, I think probably my passion is architectural forms and space and how they interact, of abstracting them. Michael, I remember you from the Rosenbaum days and you haven't lost a step. In fact, these seem to be some of the strongest paintings you've ever done. Thanks, yeah, I feel like I've been used pushing the color more and at the same time, making these forms have more history and age, introducing the organic in with the hard-edged forms. Also, when I see certain buildings or I have ideas in my head, I just, it comes quicker, the ideas. So I can, I can actually let go and just paint in a lot of ways. So that's probably part of it is like just letting go and just painting for paint's sake as well as the image itself. You know, I used to always try to put you in every movie I've ever made. You've abandoned me. Uh, yes, well, I have been busy, so I haven't been coming to the openings like I used to, to <laughs> so I, where I would see you. So I'm very happy to see you again. <laughs> You better be. Yeah. Watch and learn, Michael. This is how artists are supposed to treat me. Wow. Yeah. I love you, John. You're my favorite cinematographer ever. This is going to be in the movie. <laughs> I'm Stephanie Lieberman, and I'm part of this show that was curated by Lorraine Riesenbach of the Artist House Gallery. The pieces that I have in the show are paintings over failed paintings. That's my newest thing now. I like to put marks over failed marks. And I like using that underpainting to expose itself when it's beautiful and to cover it up when it's not. And that's what I've been experimenting with in the past two years. You manage to turn paint and the way it can be applied into an equivalent of water. I'm glad you said that. I love painting water. Water is easy for me to paint because it allows me to put paint down in a way that I want to put paint down. I can use my palette knife, I can scrape off, I can use paint splatter, and that seems to lend itself very well to water. And I do a lot of glazing and then scraping off with a palette knife. And I've been working on these large-scale urns. And this one is from my imagination. I'm Noah Buchanan. I've been trained classically in drawing and painting the figure, artistic anatomy, and I think those things really come through in the paintings. Uh, I went to school here at Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts in the mid-90s. Something I'm really passionate about is the use of old master painting techniques from the 17th century. I'm looking a lot at artists like Velazquez and Van Dyck and Rembrandt, of course, and, and trying to incorporate them into contemporary painting. The painting spring, I was in New York City, and it had been a pretty cold winter. 
the arrival of spring in the Northeast especially, it's so poignant and so poetic and so full of feeling. And she has these orchids blossoming out of her. There's no vase or receptacle or vessel for the orchids. And they seem to come from a mysterious place from behind her or within her. So she's also in the pose turning towards the light. And I like that idea of in winter time, we're in the darkness, but then we start to turn out of the darkness and into the light. So that's what that painting's about. Hi, I'm Julie Bell. I have recently started incorporating a lot of animals into my paintings, and a couple of my favorite pieces are here in this show featuring horses. Horses symbolize a lot of feeling to me and a lot of emotional power, and also a painting of some wolves, which to me is right at the heart of why I'm painting animals all together, the way they symbolize the emotional life of all of us, really. Originally, I'm from Beaumont, Texas, and I grew up there and then lived in Atlanta, Georgia for a while. And then after that, I moved all over the country and lived in many different places. And now I live in Allentown, Pennsylvania. It's perfect. We have two dogs that are Border Collie mixed with Eskimo. And the thing that's really cool about having the two dogs is helped me in my painting, to tell you the truth, with my animals, because seeing how the dogs relate to each other has taught me a lot about how they communicate with each other. They've let me learn their language with them, and I feel really honored with being in on their private conversations. I want to be able to have this connection from the animal to the person looking at my painting. I'm Kate Brockman. I've been a figurative sculptor here in Philadelphia for the last 30 years. Uh, I went to the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts and I now teach there so what goes around comes around I guess. I teach figure modeling and I also teach bronze casting. All of my work pretty much is in bronze that I cast myself in my own foundry having learned it as a student at PAFA. My work has morphed a little bit over the years, but for the last number of years I've been working very figuratively, but without using a model. Really trying to develop my sense of a naturalistic figure without relying on the input of the model. And that came about in a number of ways. One was I was interested in doing poses that models couldn't take. And I certainly didn't have the money to try and pay them to take these ridiculous poses. And I also did not want to be influenced by their personality. I wanted the concept of the piece to be purely mine. So you're saying that your knowledge of anatomy and the body is so complete that you can make a very realistic figure from your imagination? Yes, I am saying that. And I'm continually studying anatomy. I'm working these pieces without a model, but I'm constantly looking at anatomy books or other sculptural references. I also studied a lot from dancers, and I drew constantly from bodies in motion. And that was the best anatomy teacher ever because I was looking at live action muscles. There are two pieces in this show that I did do from a model and it's good every now and then to go back to the real life figure to just reconnect so that you don't get caught up in images of an ideal form that you just keep repeating over and over again. I was there for 22 years but five years ago we closed Artist House Gallery and I was so delighted when Catherine opened this and Vanessa became her manager. There are wonderful people running this gallery and it's a great gallery. Passion and Desire, the Stanek Gallery's second annual Summer Invitational, will be up through August 11th, 2018. There we are.